Well, the first log I had up on the mill was a big pine. It was 14 feet long. So I set it up and I cut it basically in a 10 inch square. Then I went ahead and set up and I just cut up as many planks, one inch planks as I could get out of that. So this is the majority of them. I might have two or three left to put up here, but I'm just gonna kind of set them up here, see how much coverage I do have at this point. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and separate them just a little bit, but I'm gonna give them about an inch gap. That way, when I put in the other ends of them, I won't have any interference or any issues putting them in. Um, and this coverage will be fine. So at 14 feet long, they worked out pretty good. I could capture that second to last rafter and my overhang is about what I need. Just a couple more left. This seemed to be the easiest way for me to get up here. I just come around the back side, toss it up there, and then move it into place. Okay, with the extension on this saw, I'm supposed to be able to cut 17 and a half feet long. That's max. This log right here is 17 feet. And I maybe got five, six inches there. And if I come down to this end, um, <laughs> you can see it's gonna be really close. I'll show you how close it really is. I've learned with these big long logs like this, I only need one clamp. Plus I don't wanna stress the log if it's bent at all and put too much pressure, you know, in three different places. So one clamp's fine, I'll make that first cut. Now this first roll is your most critical. You wanna get this square, because if this is square, then the rest of your process is easy. So you, this first one is the most critical. And here again, I'll just put this one clamp in, I'll hold it, I'll check it. And in this case, it wasn't quite perfect. I tried to video it, it was hard to see, but I just wanna stress how much this first roll is so critical. And you're on rounds at the bottom, so you've gotta get it just perfectly parallel to those back clamps. I tried to zoom in, and it's, I didn't know if you could catch that tiny little gap at the top. I mean, it's not much at all, but that's what makes a difference, and I'm gonna fix it and uh, then I'll know I'm perfectly square when I make my second cut. Also a little awkward to do this, <laughs> to be able to try to hold it in place and get that first clamp in sometimes. But you figure it out and you just do it three or four times if you need to, but you wanna make sure it's as perfect as you can get it.
See, I told you there wasn't much there. It might be an inch and a half. <laughs> my second cut I'll go ahead and cut down far enough that I get a pretty clean edge on my back side so I have one nice flat edge instead of two live edges once I get get that done then I'll go ahead and flip the log for the third time at that point I'm gonna cut it down to 10 inches then I'll stand it up and I'm gonna do my ten, uh, as many 10 inch planks as I can but with this log it's 17 feet long it's a Douglas fir I'm gonna keep a beam out of this, which is a seven by seven. So once I get it 10 by 10, which is what you see here, now I'll cut a few planks off this side. I'll roll it 180, because I still have a tiny bit of wane on the other side, and cut my other planks on the other side. That way I'll get as many tens as I can. And then I'll have to flip it up on one end and I'll get a few sevens, probably three sevens out of it. And I'll keep the pith in the middle of this. That way I keep all the strength in this beam. It will become a seven by seven. It will sit around until I'm ready to cut it down to a six by six. This is 10 inches wide, so I'm gonna make two turns. You can see there's a little bit of wane left on here, a little bit of the sap wood. I'm gonna get that off and get all the way down to the heartwood for this beam. So I'll do a 180 with this. It's 10 inches wide still, so I'll get a few more 10 inch planks. And now I'm gonna take it down to seven inches. Now the beam's all done, it's a seven by seven. I leave it on the mill, it's a nice to use for a backstop when I do these end cuts. So now I'll take my smallest piece and put it in first, all the way out to my biggest piece. Some of these might have good sides on one side and wane on both sides. So I'm gonna make one cut at 10 inches and see if I can get any more 10 inch planks out of this, which I did and then I'll cut the last of it down to eight inches. That way I'm an inch over my beam, but yet I get a full clean cut on all of these. And I think I ended up with four eights here. So then I had all the tens, I had uh, three sevens, and four eights is what I got out of this, and then the beam. So I got six tens, three sevens, and four eights, all 17, a little over 17 feet long. As always, I'll try to keep that pith in the center. 17 feet long, you get the most strength out of your beam that way. Now I couldn't just throw all my tens up here because then I would run out of end cuts. I only have six up there, remember? <laughs> so I had to use a seven at the top here. I used a seven at the bottom. I used two eights and two more tens. That way I had enough left over so I could cut all my end pieces for all of the different sizes. I had to crawl up here and measure how much I needed for each of these cuts. And uh, I was hoping it wasn't over 48 inches, and luckily it wasn't. It's 46 is all I need. 
So with that being said, with these 10 inchers, I can get four pieces out of each of these lengths, which is nice. I ended up needing 12 tens. I needed two eights and two sevens. playing the waiting game you're gonna wait them out <laughs> you know sweetie I hope someday you do catch them but it's gonna be a tough one <laughs> it won't be easy <laughs> but good for you trying yeah don't you ever give up don't you ever give up I love you I love you yes you're the best mascot I could ever have. Well, this is what I had left. I had one ten, one eight at 17 feet, and then I had a seven and an eight partial lengths. Well, I had to leave one little hole for me to get out, or I wasn't sure how I was gonna get down. <laughs> it's time for the ladder. I'll put that last piece in, and I pretty much got this wrapped up. Well, I'll get the last of the screws in here, then I take my old sheetrock square, and I'll just use the front edge of this. I'll square to the front of this structure. It might not be perfectly square, so I'll draw a long line there. And then I can go ahead and take my chalk line and put along that long line I drew and create my chalk line that way. I did it on both sides. That way I'll just come up here with my chainsaw and cut the rest of these off. And this is pretty much wrapped up. Well, when I started this, it was probably about three days ago, and I'm like, I've got three days to get this roof up here before it starts raining. And luckily, I did it. <laughs> I got the rest of my oak split, and everything is under there and covered. It worked out great. Um, I've got all my burning done. I was up here late last night doing a burn barrel, so I've got all the burning done up here also. Got everything moved, so everything's covered. My next logs are ready. I've still got one more Douglas fir to cut myself and then my neighbor's log I gotta do. That's how much of the bark I've got left, but I got rid of most of my wood, which is always nice. Um, this, you can't imagine how much excess is made with a sawmill, and if you don't keep up on it, it will just pile up and you'll just have some big pile of wood somewhere. <laughs> I've seen it with numerous people with sawmills. 
Um, still plenty of logs left here, but it rained like crazy last night. And so I was just going to walk you around and show you what I did. Now, I didn't get any tin, any metal on the top of this. So what I did is I had some tar paper and I took a piece of tar paper and ran it along the back edge. And then I took that tarp I had and I put it up there. Um, it didn't reach all the way over, so I had to run a few pieces of tar paper on the one side, but I've got it all covered. And uh, yeah, this is gonna work good. I got all the rest of that oak, there's some there, there's some packed in the middle there. Got all that split up that my neighbor gave me. Got all this covered for the rain. I got all my logs off the ground and then all my burn piles. This is the only good way I could think of to come over here and try to give you a view of this. You can see the line at the bottom there. That's the tarp line, and the bottom of that is tar paper. And then I just rolled the edge over. I used some screws and some washers, and I just went through the eyelets so I didn't ruin the tarp. I just folded it over the edge and put the screws in. And then the tar paper on the back, I just let it hang over about an inch. So it had a little bit of fall off. It is splashing here, but it's not splashing any of my wood. Now, I think this was probably the fourth thing I ever made here. <laughs> and it was basically to hold logs so I could strip them. And uh, I never stripped great big logs before they were always tiny logs back then so but this thing's been sitting around forever it still works fine as long as it's not too big and heavy so i've got these old oak branches that have been sitting around for i would say a couple years um, they're not in great shape the bugs have gotten under the bark so i'm going to strip these off though they're oak those bugs aren't going any further now once they're stripped and start drying I'm going to cut these down, and these are going to be my big 45s that go to the back here. And uh, they're oak, and they're wet, and they're solid. <laughs> they are heavy. <laughs> they were kind of awkward to work with. But I'm going to cut some 45s here, and then I'm going to cut a back cut of a 90-degree angle. That way, when I cut my cutouts in the poles, I they kind of have somewhere to sit in. That was my theory. Um and i cut these a little bit bigger than i wanted on the next one you'll see that i'll cut them a little bit smaller and they worked better this was my first one um, and it worked fine and i'm only using four inch lag bolts to go in there so i'll do a one inch counter bore because i'm using a one inch washer on a three inch or a three eighths lag bolt that's four inches long
I do do a pilot drill here, and that's just to give some relief in that wood for that lag to go in. Um, it's going in there quite a ways, and I sure don't want it to split that beam up there. So I'll always do a pilot drill on these. watered these beds for about five days now. Um, I wanted to come over here and show you what the soil looked like. It's still fairly moist, um, but I am gonna put a little bit of water on this. But you can see I uncovered this area right here. Huh? There's a worm right there. So the soil is still alive and doing really good, uh, taking care of my plants very well. Um, but all of this wood chip that's on here makes a huge difference, holding this moisture in and then with the covers on here, you know, it collects moisture inside of this cover. So I just don't have to water it much in the wintertime. Now, obviously, the sun has went down in the sky quite a ways. So with less sun, these plants will grow a little bit slower through the winter. That's the only thing. But all in all, everything's looking pretty good. I want to get everything watered. I'm going to check out all my plants all the leaves, make sure, you know, there's no bugs or anything in here. That's another thing with these covers on here. Once winter time comes and I seal these up for the night, I don't have as many issues with any infestation of, of bugs or insects or anything like that either, usually. But I will still come out here and trim everything, keep everything looking nice, and check all my plants just in case. These plants to the left, this is all cauliflower, and the ones to the right, that's romaine lettuce. So all these are doing pretty good, but they're starting to slow down now, because like I said, the sun's just getting lower and lower in the sky. Someday I'd like to set up some kind of solar system and put some lights in here for the winter, and these would really, really take off. But these are my greens, I'm always cutting off these. These are the collards, these big leaves to the right side. And then to the left, I've got the spinach, the kale, and then the Swiss chard. And I get in here to the back of the spinach and I can see a, something's been eaten, a couple of these leaves. So I'm always looking over these plants and if I've got any bad leaves or anything on these plants, I take them off. A healthy plant just thrives. You let all these leaves stay on the plant and it's still sucking energy from this plant. So get them out of there. Well, the forecast says I've got a wall of water coming, so about five days straight. I've been out here cleaning up around the cabin, just raking all the leaves up, getting everything I can off of the road. Um, that's the best thing I can do for this road base. All these pine needles and leaves, you leave it on there and it just gets embedded, it'll just ruin your road. So I'm constantly cleaning this, and I am a little bit behind here. <laughs> I think last rain I wasn't able to get any of this cleaned up. Some of these little scrape spots here are from uh, pine needles kind of building up and then the water going around them. So anyway, I'm out here cleaning all this up. I'm just about done and uh, I'll be ready for all the rain coming. <laughs> 